Hello. What I'd like to do in this video is expand on the general video on sensitivity analysis and apply it directly to the quarter project. Now it would be best if you've finished the second deliverable on the quarter project or at least watch the video and recognize I'm going to be operating off of the after tax cash flow present value which is um, explained in the second video on the quarter project. Now, I'm going to look at how the present value of the project changes as a function of the interest rate on my first example here. And so I'm going to use a data table. And let's say I have interest rates that I want to consider of um, 0% put these as percents, 5%, and I'll carry this all the way down to 50%. And so what I want to do is I actually want to calculate the present value of the project at various interest rates, and I'll explain why in a second. Now, given that the company has an interest rate of 12%, okay, so what we want to do is we want to look at our performance variable, which is the present value. And the present value is this number right here. So what I'm going to do, and I want to work off of a number that is, um, this is 65 million, so I'm going to make this 65 million dollars. And I'm going to give it one decimal point. So it's just a little bit easier to see. So I'll make all of these dollars with one decimal point. And now I'm going to create a data table. So I'm going to highlight my data table range. I'm going to go into data, what if analysis, data table. My column input cell for this present value formula is going to be my present value interest rate. That's what's going to change. So my data table is going to calculate the present values of the project after tax present values at these various interest rates. And so I've populated the data table and this is what it looks like at a 0% interest rate, 265. At 20%, it's slightly positive at 9.5 million. Recognize that 22% is where the present value equals zero. So what can we do with this information? We can plot it. And so we can go into our charts. We're going to make an XY scatter chart. We'll make it smooth. And this is what the data table tells us the present value looks like as a function of the interest rate. And so it crosses the x-axis at 22%. And the reason that this is important is because I, I, when I give a presentation, I like to have a table like or a graph like this in my back pocket in case the CFO gets into a discussion with the CEO and the um, chief operating officer as to what the appropriate interest rate is. This is a given at 12%. However, my comment is if they, if they start to get into the discussion that, well, maybe we shouldn't be using 12%, we should be using 15%, we should be using 10%. I like to throw a slide like this up and say, hey, it doesn't matter. We've got a positive present value out of all those ranges, uh, out of all those discount rates. Let's move on to the next topic. So that's why I like to use that. Okay, so now... Um, Let's go on to another um, thank that we can test the sensitivity on. And that is, I feel like 
it's very important to look at the things that impact the income. The tons of coke, the revenue per ton, and the annual growth rate. So those impact income. So let's look at the tons of coke. Okay, and we can, um, it's, eight, it's 550 thousand tons a year. So let's look at it at 80%. Do I have that right? I want too many zeros. Let's look at it at 90%. hundred percent, hundred and ten percent, and a hundred and twenty percent. Let's line these up. Okay, let's move this up here. We're going to put the present value and that is going to be the same as this present value right here. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to put a data table that's going to calculate the present value as a function of the tons of coke per year. So we're setting our data table and our column input cell is going to be the 550,000 tons. And so what we find is that if we're down 20%, we have a negative present value. If we're down 10%, it's still negative. But these numbers are hugely different. So when this happens, I like to work in terms of, um, of um, percentages. So let's look at what I'm talking about here. So uh, we'll make our x value the percent change in the, um, the y, I'm sorry, the y value, the percent change in the tons of coke. The, percent, the x value is the percent change in the tons of coke. The y value is going to be the percent change in the present value. And that's going to be from our base case. So, for example, this is going to be our, um, our x value is going to be minus... Um, four forty minus five fifty we'll tag that and divide it by five fifty we'll tag that we'll make that a percent we'll drag that down okay so this is our x that's our our x value change now let's look at the uh, present value and this is with the tons of coke. Same thing. This is going to be a percent change. Minus the base case percent change. Divided by the base case percent change. Okay, so this means it's going to drop 284%. And notice that the base case level is at zero. Let's give these an extra decimal point just so everything lines up. Okay, so that's the tons of coke. Let's look at the um, growth rate. So the growth rate's 2% is the base case.
we're looking at the present value and we'll make this 2%. We'll make this 0.8 times 2%. So that means, and we'll make these all percents. That means we're going to look at a 20% drop in the growth rate. So it's going to go from 2% down to 1.6. This is a 10% drop. And then we're going to have a 10% increase. And we'll have a 20% increase. So this isn't randomly chosen. I want these percentages to be exactly the same as these percentages. Okay, so we'll set up another data table that looks at what happens to the present value at different growth rates. And our column input cell for this data table is going to be the growth rate. And so let's make this line up properly. Let's make this line up properly. Sorry about that. So at a 1.6% a, um, growth rate, we have a $43 million present value versus 65. Um, at a 2.2%, 77.5 million. So now let's look at, um, if you'll trust me that each of these is minus 20%, minus 10%, 0, 10, and 20, we can look at the, um, so this is the Coke variation. And this can be the growth rate variation. So at a 20% a variation in the growth rate, this is going to equal this value minus the base case value divided by the base case value. So Basically, a 20% drop in the growth rate from 2% to 1.6 yields a 35% drop in the present value. Okay, so when you put the, the, this information together for um, a presentation, what you're trying to do is find out what variable, your performance variable, so your performance variable is going to be present value or um, uh, internal rate of return. What is that most sensitive to? So I've grabbed two of these things, and let's see how this looks on a graph. So what we have here is our blue line is the um, is the um, Coke variation. The orange line is the growth rate variation. The lines with the steepest slope, either positive or negative, are the ones that the variable, the performance variable, is most sensitive to, and you want to find those. And you want to, there's no general rule that you abide by. You just need to search and test your sensitivities um, and look at what the graphs look like. And then you want to, you don't want to present every sensitivity, just the most important one. It should be up there. So you would say, if you had this graph, you would say, it's much more important that we get the volume of Coke right 
than that we get the um, growth rate right. Because the pres our present value calculation is much more dependent upon that assumption because the slope is steeper. Now recognize here that the only way you can compare two of these things on the same graph is with percent changes. So it's, it's not as meaningful to have absolute magnitude changes. You need to have percent changes on these types of graphs. So when I ask you to do sensitivity analysis, I'm asking for you to test certain things. And a data table can be a super powerful way of doing it. You can just do brute force. And by brute force, I mean, instead of using data tables, um, you can build your charts. Um, I could have gone in and said 1.6%. My present value is 43 million. My present value is 43 million. Then I give it another decimal point. Or, and then 1.8% looked at my present value. I've been working off of the present value number. You can also look at the after tax um, cash flow internal rate of return number. 2% is where we are. Now, when we talk about things like decision reversal, let's look at what would what would our decision reversal happen? It happens when our present value interest rate, um, I'm sorry, a present value calculation is zero. And so what would be the tons of Coke that would make the present value um, after tax cash flow equal to zero. Well, we can do a goal seek. So to do a goal seek, we're going to go into data mode, what if analysis, goal seek. And what we want to do is we want to set our present value to zero by changing our annual tons of coke. And that looks like at 511,291 tons of coke, we end up with a present value of zero. Notice that we also end up with an internal rate of return of exactly 12%, which our present value interest rate. Now, does this make sense? 511, 291. Well, somewhere between 495 and 550, we end up with the present value equal to zero. And if you, um, and if you did this with a, um, um, interpolated it, you'd come up with the 511. All these numbers are off because this is, uh, these percentages are, are way off. So if we, if we, when I say all these numbers over in these columns right here, they're using this, the right numbers. But if I made this 550, they go back to where they belong. So I didn't make, I didn't make my, my graphs that smart. Um, the other thing we could say, we, we could tinker with the tax rate. We could say, hey, we, we think that it's a, the tax rates have to go up to balance the budget. What happens if the tax rate goes from 32% to 40%? Well, look at that. The, the internal rate of return hasn't changed very much if it changes from 32% to 40%. So that's probably, the value isn't that sensitive to this. Um, if you look at the labor rate, we might say um, we want to test the present value, set it to zero by changing the labor growth rate. 
So we'd have to miss by almost 50%, a little over 50. It would have to be instead of 4.5% a year, it would have to be 6.5% a year. That's our decision reversal point on the labor rate. Now, we can also try a couple of things. What if the labor rate was, um, what if it was 5.5%? And at the same time, the revenue per ton was 1.8%. Well, now we're getting down to where we don't have a super high present value. It's still a good project. Our internal rate of return is 16.6%. It was 12%. I mean, it is 12% for the company's present value. So we're still looking pretty good. But if the company's... Uh, interest rate happened to be 15%, then we'd be getting potentially a little bit uh, in an area of concern if these things were to happen. The other thing is, um, now Sunoco is a big company, so a payback period of, of four years is not a big deal. But there are some companies that won't even evaluate a, a project if it's got a payback period in excess of three years, regardless of the internal rate of return and the after-tax cash flow. These are usually the smaller companies. So what I've tried to do with this video is show you how to put together some charts using data tables. You don't have to use data tables if you're not comfortable with them. But if you want to combine different variables on the same chart, it's best to use percent changes. That way you can line up the X variables and have the different Y variable percent changes. Hope this has been useful.